Hello. In today's video, we'll take a look at connecting to external script files. So using external files allows us to make our code more modular and more portable. And this means it's easy to manage, maintain, share and reuse our scripts. I use external scripts like this all the time to build reusable modules that I can use across multiple projects. Many of these modules are available in my GitHub repo, so check the link in the video description if you'd like to see them. So let's get started. So I have a blank project here. First we'll add a sine wave generator to the project. And now we'll build a simple module that randomly changes the pitch of the incoming notes. So this is really easy, it's just one line of code in the on note callback. So put message dot set find detune and then math dot randin to generate a random integer between 0 and 100. So it's nothing fancy and it's just to demonstrate the basic principle. So let's save this entire script including every callback even the ones we aren't using and to do this, we're just going to right click in the script editor and select save script to file from the context menu. And we'll save this script to our project scripts folder. And it's got to have the extension .js because it's going to be a JavaScript file. So let's open that script now in a text editor. So we can see that this is a full high script. It contains all of the usual callbacks. They're all empty, of course, except for the on note callback where we put our pitch changing code. Now let's go back into highs. We're going to remove this script processor and add a new one, an empty one in its place. And now we're going to connect this new one to our external script. So to do that, we just right click on the script processor header and select connect to external script. Then we select the file we saved earlier. As soon as we do that, you can see that just like the built in scripts, the hard coded ones that come with highs, it's no longer editable. The buttons to select the different callbacks have gone. Unlike a built in script, though, we can still access the code if we want to. There are two methods. The easiest is to just open it in the script editor by clicking this button. And now we can make changes to the script. However, these changes won't be saved. So when you reopen your project, the external script file will be reloaded and it will overwrite any changes you've made here. If you really want to make changes to this instance of the script, you need to first disconnect it from the external file. Again, it's really easy. So back in the main workspace, we just right click on the script processor's header and select disconnect from external script. We get a little pop-up asking us to confirm the action. So just click OK. And we're back to where we started. The script is now loaded into highs and isn't connecting to the external file. So changes we make here will be saved as usual. OK, let's reconnect it to the external file. And now we'll add another sine wave generator. Let's add a script processor to this second sine wave generator. And we'll also connect this script processor to our external file. So now we have two script processors working independently, but reading from the same source file. Any change we make to the external file will affect both script processors. This is like when you load two instances of the same plugin inside a DAW. Each instance can be set up and controlled independently, but they both read from the same file. So if you update the plugin file, then both instances will also update. So this is the same thing. If we update the script file, both script processors will update. So let's make a change to our external file. We'll open it back up in CUDA text. You can use any text editor. In the on init callback, we'll grab a list of all of the sine wave generators that the script can see. We'll use the synth.getIDList command for this, which returns an array. 
and then we'll print the first element of that array to the console. Okay, let's save our file. So to get our script processors to recognize that the external file has been updated, we can either reload the project, right click each script processor and select reload external file, or select the recompile all scripts option from the tools menu. But before we reload the script though, let's just talk about what we expect to see happen. So each script processor in our project is a child of a sine wave generator. That means when we run the get id list command, each script should only be able to see its parent sine wave generator. It won't see the other one. So in other words, that array that the get id list function returns should only have one element in it for each of the scripts, and that will be the parent sine wave generator of that script. Okay, so now I'll go to tools and recompile all of the scripts in the project. This will reload both instances of the external file. And let's see what appears in the console. So we can see that both sine wave generators names have been printed to the console. Each script is finding its parent and printing that to the console. So even though the code we've loaded into both of the script processors is exactly the same, the output for each one is different. Okay, this has been a very simple example to demonstrate connecting to external files. In practice, you'll probably use this for more complex scripts. For some good examples, you should take a look at the GitHub repository I mentioned earlier. Most of the modules in there are GPL licensed and some are public domain, so you can use those in your project as well. I've got modules of various types of round robins, uh, legato controls, release triggering, retuning, all kinds of stuff. I don't guarantee that they'll all work perfectly, but they should at least be a good starting point. Alright, I hope you found this video useful. If you'd like to see more like it, please click the subscribe button. If you have any questions or comments, leave them below. And as always, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.